Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 23. In this tutorial we're going to focus on auto aim, meaning as soon as we aim our weapon it automatically shifts to a zombie. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, we have the ability to aim our weapon, fire our weapon, that's all great. Um, but we want to go a step further now because in those retro Resident Evil games, they kind of shifted towards whichever enemy uh, was perhaps closest or whichever was most relevant. Because we only have one enemy in this um, game so far, it's not going to be too difficult to create. But further down the line, we'll create another system which allows us to select which enemy we want to be able to auto-aim towards. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to basically create a new script which is specifically going to be for auto-aiming. And you can either make it so as it constantly auto-aims or whether it just auto-aims once and then switches off. I'm going to have it constantly auto-aiming just to kind of illustrate and show how it's actually working. Uh, but again, if you want to turn it off, um, you can if you want to. So how do we do this? Well, let's start by creating a new script. Let's go to our scripts folder, character, right click, create, C sharp script. And we'll call this one auto-aim. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to create the script which automatically aims, but then we're going to control that script from a different script, i.e. the weapon mechanic script, because we want that to be able to be the be all and end all of control when it comes to weapons. So what do we need to do in this script? Well, firstly, we don't need the start method and we don't need the annotations. They can disappear. We do, however, need a couple of variables. So the first one is going to be a transform variable. I don't think we've used a transform so far, but basically what that is, is just a way of determining coordinates, rotation, location, all that kind of thing of a game object. So it's still theoretically a game object, but it's not being read as a game object, just its stats. So public transform, and we'll call it the zombie. The next is going to be a boolean. Now this one is going to be static because we want to be able to control this via a different script. Obviously for different purposes later on, but obviously if we kind of future proof things, it just makes things a lot easier down the line. So public static bool, and we'll call this one aiming gun. We'll make it equal to false. And the last variable that we're going to need is going to be a float, and that is going to determine just how quickly our character can pivot and auto-aim. Obviously, the higher it is, the quicker it's going to be. So we'll have this as public float aim speed semicolon. So first things first, we're going to set that aim speed right here. And I guess you could set it up here if you want to, but if you want to make it dynamic, you can always do it down here. So aim speed equals, uh, now I'm going to set this one at about 10. When I tested this preparing for the tutorial, I found that having it about 10 is roughly about right. If you want it slower or faster, obviously you just go uh, higher or lower. So next thing we need to say is if, and in brackets, aiming gun equals false then we do the following. Uh, let's get rid of that there. There we go. So what do we do? Well, we have to declare a new vector three here. So we're gonna to have to work on a direction and a target. So we need a vector three, and we can call this anything we want. I'm gonna call it target direction. And going to make it equal to the position of the zombie minus the current transform position of whatever object this script will be attached to. So if it's attached to the player, then it will be minus the position of the player. It'll all make sense when it circles back around and you'll see it in action. So this is going to be the zombie dot position 
minus transform dot position semicolon and probably worth noting that we do have to make sure that this script is attached to our player uh, next we are going to say target direction dot y equals zero and i think that will probably become apparent later on there are different ways of kind of snapping and looking at things within unity uh, but occasionally they can go a little bit astray because when it's trying to look at something when its coordinates are not quite right it can end up looking towards the sky and your player can be looking like michael jackson kind of thing you know smooth criminal um so next we need to declare a float and basically this is going to be determined as each individual uh, rotational step you could call it so we'll have float and i'm going to call it rot step just short for rotational step and we'll make that equal to aim speed multiplied by time dot delta time now we've dealt with time previously and obviously because we are working with time once again because we need it to turn relative to how fast the game is running I, if you want to run it at two speed it's again in relation to that so we have to make sure we do it in relation to that time uh, next we need another vector three and this is going to be our new direction i.e the new way we want to look so basically we're saying uh, this is now where we want to go and this is going to be a vector three which rotates towards our target direction so we can say vector three we'll call it new direction and we'll make that equal to a vector three dot rotate towards and then we tell it the current one which is going to be transform dot forward so i.e the current one where we are right now and we need to tell it where we want it to rotate to so in this case it's going to be target direction next we need to basically tell it how fast we want to do it so that's going to be um, the speed of our rotational so rot step and then comma zero to finish off that line and then the final thing to do to make this all look nice and smooth is to say transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation and in brackets the new direction semicolon and save so basically that's all there is to it to get the rotation working for our player now at the moment this obviously is not going to do anything simply because um, at the moment aiming gun is always going to be false nothing is telling it that it has to change but for now let's just set this all up in unity and then we can go back to our weapons script to make sure that we can invoke it correctly so let's attach auto aim onto our soldier right there and it's down here next we need to set the zombie and that's going to be the actual zombie itself not the original enemy it's the model of the zombie so that goes into there and next what we need to do is we need to basically say um, that this can only be done when we're aiming so we need to turn off auto aim we need to head back into our scripts and go to weapon mechanics now this is where we have to modify things very very carefully so we can see that at this point we're saying that is aiming is true that's fine and we have our animation that's all fine but it does mean that when we want to let's say activate this auto aim we have to make sure that we do it correctly so when we are aiming we have it on and when we finished aiming we have it off so in this case if the mouse button down is one after we've started our animation 
let's say that auto aim dot aiming gun equals true semicolon and down here where we've got the get mouse button up basically what we have to do is say auto aim dot aiming gun equals false but at the same time we also have to enable auto aim so this is like you can think of it as a fail safe um, kind of putting it in place that we turn it on but we make sure we've got it on and you can also use these two variables to kind of stop the aim straight away you'll see what i mean when we get to it so as soon as we press the button down and we have the aiming on or rather just before we put the aiming on let's actually turn that um component on so that's going to be the player dot get component in spiky brackets auto aim open close bracket dot enabled equals true so then obviously that means the final thing to do after we have our mouse button up is say the player dot get component in spiky brackets auto aim open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so the functionality of this auto aim will work uh, as intended and you can see here that this is where we basically are saying that's uh, false so we can go ahead with it um, but it's going to get a little bit odd i think and um, so i don't quite think this is going to work as intended um, because well basically because it, we've set it as false i mean at that moment we can turn them off just because i want to illustrate how this is working but i will get around to showing you a little bit more of this let's just make sure this works for now uh, so let's press play and if i scroll down here we should be able to see auto aim come on there we go so auto aim came on but you can see that while i hold down the right mouse button our player is still moving it's constantly auto aiming i'm going to keep it like this and obviously we can fire if we want to that's all good uh, but you can turn this off if you want for example if we set this now as false and let's press play so this isn't quite going to function as intended you can see we just kind of don't do anything but if we set it to true and save and head to unity let it compile press play once oh, there we go i thought i pressed it and there we go so it will auto aim once again so best thing to do now at this point if you want it to stop auto aiming you can modify this code to say hey wait i'm actually stopping now uh so you can basically turn it off um all it is is just adding an extra boolean to say um we've got this far let's stop and then just making sure you update it here as well uh I'm, i might actually change it later on uh, i don't want to waste too much time going over that uh, to be honest we've got the auto aim working uh it looks good the one thing i do want to work on next is going to be the animation itself so if we press play it's very janky how you can see it just doesn't really do much so next tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to use something called blend tree and we're going to make that animation look a lot smoother than just the janky start stop that it appears to be right now so until that next tutorial guys Thank you very much for watching.